Hi guys, I'm Kelly. I'm the creator behind Crafty Coats. I recently set up this new YouTube channel so that I can show you how I changed some really old, battered, bit stinky pieces of furniture into some really beautiful items that you can then go on to hopefully sell. If you've got any questions along the way, just pop them in the comments box. I'm always happy to help. Or if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, just type in at Crafty Coats. But for now, let's get stuck into this piece and let me show you how I created it got pretty lucky with this piece it's not too much damage there's a piece here I think that might be watermark um some chipping a little bit out of the veneer on the top but overall I'm really pleased with this piece I'm definitely going to keep the handles and I'm going to try and keep this wood but we will see what happens once we've sanded it how good the quality is Right, so it's all the hardware's off. I'm going to take it in now and try and see if I can sand back the two drawers and the two cupboard doors. I really want to keep this wood, so let's see if that's going to be achievable. And this is why it's so incredibly important for me to save this wood. So I've just oiled this one just to show you. Look at that. I mean, how could you paint over it? It's stunning. So I just need to oil this one up. Okay, so we've done our doors, we've done our drawers. So now it's time to get the body of the piece ready for painting. So two things I'm gonna do, key sand it and a really, really good wash. We don't need to sand this down like we did with the doors and the drawers because it's gonna be painted. So we're just looking for that key that our paint can stick to. When you come into key sanding, two things I think you need to just make sure of. One is that you're not using a grit that is too high. I usually do a key sand with a 240. You're just trying to buff up, buff's probably the wrong word, uh, rough up the surface so that the paint can stick to it. And the second thing is, oh, these are your best friends. So this is just a sanding block. I did tell you at the beginning that this is true life. So my dog's chewed on this, but it still works really well. So um, sanding block, about a 240, and then just key sand. Here we go, all key sanded. Now for the most important bit. If there is anything that you shouldn't miss and you should give all your attention to, it is cleaning. I can't stress enough how important that is. So once you think it's clean, clean it again. So the products I'm choosing to use to paint this piece are my favorite Dixie Bell chalk paint. And this one is dried sage. It's been well used as you can see from the pot and also my Dixie Bell brush. I'm definitely um, a brush user when it comes to paint. Other people roll it, spray it, but I just enjoy the process of painting it on. So these are my products I'm gonna be using. Okay, we're finally ready for paint. Now, I always paint the bottoms first. A um, couple of reasons. One, because once it's painted and dry, we can flip it over and we have a base that isn't touching the floor um, that we can paint, if that makes sense. But the other reason I do it is because I always want to paint the top of my piece last um, because I want to make sure that it doesn't get nicked or scratched or anything um, once we put that final coat on. So I'm going to do my base coat first, oh, sorry, my bottom of my piece first and then flip it over and we can do the rest of the piece. So the bottoms had two coats of the paint. Um, I always like to tape it up just to make sure we get a nice clean finish. Um, I take the tape off when the paint's still a tiny bit damp. I just find it easier. There we go. 
And now we flipped it over, we can get on with painting the rest of the piece. Painting the trim now on the inside, and I always like to tape it up. It just gives, again, gives that professional finish, um, giving it a clean, sharp edge. So just all the way around where I'm gonna be painting on the inside. Okay, we got our first coat on. Don't be tempted to rush this. I'm probably gonna leave this dry for a good two hours. Uh, just to make sure that it's sinking in, it's settling before I put that second coat on. So we'll walk away and we'll leave it for a bit. I don't want the handles to be um, shiny and new looking. I'm really liking the antique feel that they've already got. Um, so what I've done, I've washed them, um, but just in a light soapy water. And I'm just gonna wax them, just to give them a bit of longevity, but that's it. I'm not gonna do anything else with these. I just think they're really gonna add to the character of the piece as the way they are. And there we've got it, our second coat. Looking really good, really happy with the coverage. We've taken all the tape off um, where I taped up for the drawers. So now we need to top coat and seal this piece. So I'll just take you through what I use and how I apply my top coats. Okay, so anyone who's ever tried to top coat knows that um, you can ruin a piece of furniture um, by getting your top coat wrong it's really important that you take care um, and apply correctly. So it's rare for me to use a roller, but I do use a roller on my top coat. I just find it gives that better finish um, and you don't tend to see the brush strokes. So I'm gonna be using a roller. When you're pouring your polyvine out, it's really important that you don't shake this product. If you shake it, you're gonna create air bubbles that will be visible on your product. So to mix it, just turn it. Just give it a good dull turn and that will mix your product. Do not be tempted to shake it. Okay, and then we tip it back up and we pour enough product that we think we're gonna need for our piece. And I'll show you how we apply. Okay, and off we go. I'm just getting some of the product onto my roller and getting and then applying. Don't be afraid of this product. Just get it all on and I'll show you a little trick in a minute to help smooth it and make sure we don't get any um, streaks. So firstly, let's just get it on. Don't forget your sides. You probably do three coats of this, uh, maybe two down the sides, but for the top, you really want that extra protection. Um, so I would say three coats. Let it dry really well in between coats. But for your top, especially, I recommend three. Okay, so I've got it all on. A little bit gathering there, so I'm just gonna take that off with my ruler. Okay. And let me just show you how you then go about not getting any streaks. So, it's all on. Now, all I wanna do is roll back and forth in one direction so that you do not end up with roller streaks and I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. Make sure you apply your polyvine um, to all these high traffic areas as well so anywhere where you um, draw is going to be pulled a lot. Just make sure that that's really well covered. And for this, you can absolutely use a brush. It's just easier to get into all those nooks and crannies. You don't need a roller for this bit. So I did say that I used two products for top coating. I've already done my polyvine and shown you how to use that. I'm now gonna go in with some clear wax. This one is Rust-Oleum, but you can get any uh, brand um, will work just as well. And what I'm gonna do with this is just get a clean cloth. Um, this one might not look clean, but it's been through the wash. Dab a little bit on and I'm applying it to all my high traffic areas. So if you think about the life cycle of this product, how many times the customer's gonna be pulling and opening and closing and opening and closing these doors and drawers. You just wanna make sure it's got the protection it needs. So a little bit of clear wax will help. It also helps with um, drawers being pulled and um, open and closed easier. So it's a good all round product. Leave it about 10 minutes and then you're good to go. So I've applied this all over my product. I am gonna leave it for 
10 minutes, like I say, and then I'm gonna put all the doors and drawers back in, which is, it's really the exciting bit. The inside of this cupboard is perfect. I'm not gonna paint it, I'm not gonna line it. Just needs a really good clean and it's perfect as it is. However, the inside of the drawers are a different story. Something's been spilled over the years and what I've done is I've given it a really good clean, but I'm gonna line it just to make it as pretty as the rest of it. Okay, so I will show you how to cut the wallpaper in a future video, but I will share with you today how I attach it to the drawer. So for inside furniture, I just use wallpaper paste. If I'm laying wallpaper outside on the furniture then I'll use PVA glue but I'll show you that at another time. So inside is just wallpaper paste. The main reason for that is if the customer ever wants to change it it's a lot easier to pull that out um, with wallpaper paste. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually put a layer of wallpaper paste on the drawer and let it dry before I do anything and that's just because this wood is so dry um, it's just going to soak up all the wallpaper glue and our paper's not going to sit properly. So we're almost sealing it before we do anything. So let's let that dry and then I'll come back and show you how okay, to lay so it. So our wallpaper paste dried. Um, so we can now go in and lay our paper. So what we need to do is just apply another coat, which I've just done. But just making sure, guys, that you're getting right into these corners because that's where it's going to lift if it ever does. Okay, so a nice, good, thick layer of wallpaper paste. And then we just get our pre-cut paper lay it in and the good thing about wallpaper paste is you can move the paper around a little bit it doesn't stick straight away just to make sure you've got it in the right place and then the final thing we need to do is one of these you could use a credit card you could use anything really but i find that the actual wallpaper um, spread is the best thing and we just make sure that every single piece of this wallpaper from the middle out is pushed and laid down and then we just wait for it to dry and we have a really nice pattern on the inside of our drawers. And there it is, doors and drawers back in. This wood guys, oh, how beautiful. This was the reason I wanted to save this wood so, so badly. I've never seen a design quite like it. It's absolutely beautiful. And it reminds me of a pair of wings. What do you think? Or am I losing the plot? So we're almost done. Um, we've stripped it, we've sanded it, we've washed it, we've painted it and we've top coated it. The last thing we need to do is stage it so that hopefully someone will buy it. 